One final type of laser spectroscopy technique that we'll talk about from your textbook, uh, aside from Raman spectroscopy, which we'll get to next, is time-resolved spectroscopy. And so this takes advantage of the fact that laser pulses uh, can be very short. So we can generate laser pulses with pulse lengths of, you know, on the order of nanoseconds down to picoseconds, and even femtosecond lasers are, are possible. And let me move this so you can see that right and so we can you know depending on the specifics of the situation we can generate these very short pulses of light and then measure what happens after molecules absorb that light uh, and so this can measure you know dynamic processes on those time scales on nanosecond or picosecond time scales or even femtoseconds and there are even scientists working, trying to work down even to the attosecond time scale. We're measuring, you know, what are electrons doing inside of molecules? Really cool stuff. Uh, and so this figure from your textbook shows how you might do this. So this is an example of a time-resolved spectroscopy experiment. And so the idea here is that uh, we have, this is a type of spectroscopy known as pump probe spectroscopy, where we have one, one, uh, one laser uh, that acts as our pump that's going to cause something to happen in our sample of interest and then a second laser comes in shortly afterwards to measure what happened uh, and so usually th these are actually generated from the same laser uh, so you know we have a laser coming in and we split the light into two parts our pump pulse goes through a specific path length and then goes through our sample and our probe pulse is the other half of the light that went through the beam splitter and it goes through this this jag here, this adjustable delay line. And this is a platform here, and we can move these mirrors back and forth. So the further the move, mirrors move, in this case up, uh, the longer the light will take to go through there. It won't be much of a difference, but it'll be enough, you know, that it'll adjust it by that nanosecond or picosecond timescales that we're interested in. And we can change this adjustable delay line to measure things as a function of how you know the, the time difference between the pump and probe pulse and so this allows us to measure to you know say uh, you know the example that's in your textbook and we'll look at some data from this is say we have the icn molecule in the gas phase and we want to measure what happens you know how long does it take after this molecule absorbs light so we get absorption here and what happens is this molecule dissociates when it absorbs a specific color of light into iodine and cyanide. And we might wonder how long does this process take, right? You may not think about this, but there is some length of time, you know, it takes for this molecule to absorb the light and then actually fall apart into our two different molecules. And with the pump probe experiment, we can do, we can measure that. So we send our pump pulse in to excite the ICN molecule and then our probe pulse measures one of the products, in this case, cyanide, uh, cyanide gas. And so we can pump that, that dissociative transition and then measure the actual, um, the actual production of the cyanide gas. So let's, let's look at the data from this. So this is just a schematic um, from your textbook kind of showing this where we pump with a you know, wavelength, pump something to an excited state that's dissociative, so the molecule is gonna fall apart and then we probe the cyanide to an excited state. And so we can measure things as a function of time delay, right? So the intensity here is how much light is being absorbed by the cyanide. Uh, and so you can see if you do it before you, if you measure the probe before the pump even shows up, as you expect, you get you know, no absorption. And then as we increase the time delay, we see this, uh, you know, this, this sort of behavior that tells us how quickly, right? So around four by 400 femtoseconds or so, most of the cyanide has already been generated. And so that's sort of the length of time it takes for this ICN molecule to fall apart after it absorbs light. And this is just, you know, one specific experiment, but this is the type of thing you can do with lasers. And it's not really possible any other way because of the very short light pulses that you can generate.